Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this midweek episode of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman that we call Inconceivable. It's a time where we take a look at current events and sometimes walk away scratching our head. That's why we call it Inconceivable. But if you like the content you hear on Indie Thinker, maybe you like our Monday episodes where we drop a new episode with a new guest each week or even these midweek episodes, uh, please do us a favor. Go right now, subscribe, click that bell so that you can be notified when new episodes drop, and make sure to share this with other friends. If you like this content and you think other people will as well, please make sure to spread the word and, and help us let people know about what we're doing here at Indie Thinker. We appreciate it very much. And we thank you for taking the moment to watch this episode. As a nation right now, we're sitting on pins and needles as we await the verdict of the Chauvin trial and the response of those who hear it. How did we get to this place? How did we get to this place where we feel like the balance of our nation is at stake right now as we wait for the verdict on this single trial? A brief glimpse at history may be helpful to tell us something that deserves to be noted. Totalitarian regimes love crisis. Now, before you think that's just an overbloated statement, hear me out. Vladimir Lenin capitalized on World War I by writing letters encouraging Russian soldiers to kill their generals because they were oppressors. He did this in order to wrench power from the provisional government of Russia so that he could install a dictatorship and become the leader himself, which of course he was successful in doing later. Stalin later would take a page from that same playbook by convincing farm working peasants that they were being oppressed and that they should turn on their more wealthy landowners, the kulaks, and kill them. Some 300,000 deaths later, Stalin would get his way, take the land that the Kulaks formerly owned for himself, and create a famine that would eventually kill 10 million people. So listen, I'm only suggesting that it's naive at best not to notice the trend in history, that crisis is a great opportunity for those who have malicious intent or think they know what's best for you and then try to impose it upon you. So when I ask, how did we get here? I'm asking, how did we get to the place that the media has convinced us with anecdotal evidence at best that America's police are syst systemically racist at a time where the NBA wants to say the same thing but will not lift their voice one second over China, one of their biggest partners, when they have over a million Muslim slaves in forced labor camps? And according to the Polaris Project, every 26 seconds a child is abducted and introduced to the human slave trade. While pastors and leaders are busy posting black squares, where is the outcry on much more substantial issues that deserve all of our attention? Sure, let's decry all injustice, but let's all be nuanced and proportional. But perhaps there are those who thrive on crisis and see it as an opportunity to increase the overreach of the government. While protesting is a hallmark of American freedom, we cannot be honest and suggest that that's what we're actually discussing anymore. What we're discussing is the narrative that we wish to buy into as Americans. Do we believe this nation was founded on holy and good principles that, yes, we lost our way and we needed to be reminded of? Or is it built upon white supremacy? And by the way, the media is happy to sit back and line their pockets by suggesting polarizing nonsense like this. Your kids start getting killed? White people's kids start getting killed? smoking that doobie that's actually legal probably in your state now, but they don't know what it was. And then the kid runs and it pop, 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 pop. Cop was justified. Why'd you run? Oh, he had a baseball game tonight. Huh? The white kid. Oh, big family. That house over there. Those start piling up. What is going on with these police? Oh, what? Maybe we shouldn't even have police. We should at least ask if totalitarian minded people aren't looking for, say, mass shootings so that they can implement gun control, civil unrest so that they can call filibusters a Jim Crow relic and pack the Supreme Court to their liking. All I know is this, is that it's a trustworthy saying that when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. And when it comes to the economic crisis, don't waste it when it, it can have a very positive impact on climate change and energy, secure, energy security. And that's what we're trying to do. Catch new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman for free right now by going to YouTube or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Simply type Indie Thinker with Reed Huberman in the search bar and click on my face. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to stay informed when a new episode drops.